There's three minutes to the author of this legislation, uh, the active distinguished gentleman from Oregon, Mr. DeFazio. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized for three minutes. I thank the chairman. Uh, it's interesting to hear uh, some Republicans on the other side of the aisle say this commission isn't necessary. We are going to run a $700 billion trade deficit this year. That means we will borrow, predominantly from China, Japan, and a few other countries, $700 billion to buy things that we used to make in America. And it's not a level playing field. We get played for a sucker in these trade deals. We need a new, strong trade policy. Yes, American workers can compete, but not on an unfair, tilted playing field, which is what they're being asked to do today. I'll give a couple of examples. When we're doing uh, MFN uh, permanently for China, which I voted against because we lost that annual leverage with them, uh, we guys from Oregon came in and they said, Congressman, you know, right now a ship is going into China. Imagine what it's going to mean for our markets. They're finally accepting our wheat. This new trade deal is going to be great. I said, well, actually, uh, I've got translated broadcasts of their agriculture minister that say that they're not going to allow that and they're not going to become dependent upon imported food. They said, oh, no, you're wrong. So, yeah, that one ship got in. Congress uh, voted the deal. China was permanently off the hook to be reviewed for unfair trade practices by the Congress. And guess what? That was the last ship. They came in the next year, kind of hanging their heads and said, you're right. Are you going to say it? And I said, no, I'm going to say, what are we going to do now? And talked about fighting back against these unfair trade practices. We can look at uh, just after uh, the first President Bush signed a deal with Canada that was supposed to do with their unfair, uh, unfair uh, subsidies and dumping of cheap lumber into the U.S. But before the ink was even dry on the deal, Canada reclassified uh, their, much of their lumber to salvage. Uh, they uh, basically started giving away their trees on the stump uh, instead of making companies buy them and uh, provided subsidized transportation and other things, and again, flooded the U.S. market. We're still fighting with the Canadians 17 years later over their subsidized lumber, and we've still lost thousands of jobs. Yeah, th there was a little bit of cheaper lumber available here, but when you lose the jobs for working-class Americans, middle-class American families, our consumers, when they lose their jobs, it doesn't matter if a house is, you know, maybe three or four hundred dollars cheaper. They can't afford the house. So we need a level playing field. We need to identify these barriers that are being put up by the Chinese and others. The Chinese are going to run more than a quarter of a trillion dollar trade surplus with the U.S. this year. They recently passed a law saying they're going to have a huge renewable program in China. And the law says that nobody can buy a renewable windmill or photovoltaic or anything else if it wasn't manufactured in China by a Chinese company. Clear. Would the gentleman yield an additional two minutes? I'd be glad to yield an additional two minutes to the author of the bill. The gentleman from Oregon has an additional two minutes. I thank the gentleman. So the Chinese have passed a law saying that no one in China can buy a U.S.-made windmill or photovoltaic. If we get these green jobs and green industry going that the president wants, Chinese aren't going to buy them. But guess what? the so-called stimulus bill that passed this Congress, part of those funds, our taxpayer dollars money we borrowed, in part from China to finance that bill, but were used to buy windmills made in China. They can get their windmills in here like that. There's a company proposing to assemble photovoltaics uh, in uh, my hometown of Eugene, Oregon. But I also have people in Oregon trying to keep their companies going with Made in America photovoltaics. But they're having trouble competing with the subsidized cheap junk from China because their photovoltaics are not very good. Again, you know, we can't send ours there, but they can send theirs here without any constraint. I remember back to Lee Iacocca, uh, back when we used to sort of laugh at the Japanese cars, and he said, you know, uh, when he had minivans and uh, the Japanese started producing minivans, he said, you know, I produce a minivan for $16,000. I send it to Japan, it sits on the dock 
for six months while a series of inspectors come down and look at it. And then finally, when it gets to the showroom, it costs $30,000, and it's been there six months. He said the Japanese take their minivan. It costs $17,000 to make it. They were less efficient then. He said they put it on a ship. It gets to Portland. They roll it off. It's in the showroom the next day. Do we ever reciprocate? We say, okay, if you're going to keep our cars on your docks for six months, how about we're going to keep your cars on our docks for six months? And that's what the Trade Commission will point to. It will point to the unfair trade barriers, these whole series of different phytosanitary or, or you know, actually safety inspections or currency manipulation, all the things that China and other countries are doing to steal our jobs and kill off our industries. The, this commission can point to those things, uh, they can emphasize them, and they can propose ways that we can deal with it more meaningfully in trade agreements in the future. I recommend to our colleagues help end the trade deficit vote for this legislation. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Well, Madam Speaker, I yield two uh, minutes to uh, the former uh, a top Republican on the Trade Subcommittee, but the gentleman from California who's focused on creating jobs through selling more California and United States products and services, uh, Mr. Herger. The gentleman from California is recognized for two minutes. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I find it ironic that we are here today creating one more commission to study a problem or report back with possible solutions sometime in the future when we could be taking action right now today that will reduce our trade deficit and make a real difference for American workers. One of the findings in this bill states the problem very clearly, quote, while the United States has one of the most open economies in the world, the United States faces significant tariff and non-tariff trade barriers with its trading partners, close quote. For example, over 90% of Panamanian and Colombian exports enter the U.S. duty-free. Additionally, the average Korean tariff for U.S. exporters is more than four times the average tariff that Korean products face in the United States market. We could slash these high tariffs on U.S. exports and level the playing field for American workers by passing the current pending free trade agreements with these three nations. Madam Speaker, I urge my colleagues to continue the bipartisan tradition since World War II of supporting trade and call for passage of the pending FTAs with Colombia, Panama, and South Korea. If we really want to create jobs, pass these trade agreements. If we want to increase exports, pass these trade agreements. If we want to reduce trade deficit, pass these trade agreements. We don't need another commission. We need action. The gentleman from Texas reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from Michigan is recognized. Uh, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Michigan reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from Texas. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Well, first, just addressing some earlier comments. Many Democrats, including Chairman Levin, uh, supported bringing China into the World Trade Organization to force them to play by the rules. And since we have did that, when they violate those rules, the United States has prevailed in seven of the eight complaints we have brought to that organization. So it is helping keeping China in line so we have a level playing field. And also, if you've picked up the paper in the last week, you've noted that while uh, auto sales in the United States for our auto manufacturers has remained flat, its sales are grown overseas and its profits are growing because they're allowed to sell American automobiles around the world. That's good for the U.S. auto workers in the United States. I think I appreciate the Chairman bringing this legislation together. I know it is well intended. It's important to tackle America's trade deficit the right way. And I think everyone understands another government commission alone is no substitute for new customers for American workers, farmers, and manufacturers. The best way to shrink the trade deficit while strengthening America's economy is to reduce America's dependence on foreign oil and open the world to more U.S. products and services. 
I know if my Democrat friends and those in the White House are serious about reducing the trade deficit, we are eager to work with them by starting to take up and passing the pending trade agreements with South Korea, Panama, and Colombia. I rise in support of this bill because I think that any objective and honest commission will find that creating new markets and new customers for American exports will reduce our trade deficit, will create jobs.